Okay. In the previous okay. video, we looked at present worth analysis of different alternatives. So in this one, we're going to look at alternatives and make decisions based off of present worth for options that don't have the same life cycles, don't have the same lifespans. So previously we had seen this, for example, where we were using 10% for a present worth analysis and we had three options to go off of, which was A, B, and C. And the cash flow diagrams for those were essentially the same, just like you see here. Could have been any of those, right? A, B, or C. The only difference was the fixed costs, the annual operating costs, and the salvage value that we experienced. So calculating the present worth for each of those was pretty straightforward. Uh, you, you see the setup here, you just had to plug in the values for each option and then pick the one that costs you the least or makes you the most money. But in this case, it was cost you the least. So let's do a what if. Let's look at that same example, except this time we're going to say, all right, what happens if, for instance, the lifespan for equipment A or option A is three years, not five. So all the same values, except option B is six years. And then option C has a life of four years. Now, if we were gonna calculate the present worth, oh, that looks good. If we were gonna calculate the present worth of A, right? This would be its cash flow diagram. And B would be here. Now, this isn't a fair comparison. I mean, what, what time span are we gonna use? So if we calculate the present worth of this, we're only going out three years. And option B never has a chance to return its greater salvage value, right? Uh, right. See, this has a larger salvage value and a smaller operating cost. So over time, this is going to be better. So it's not a fair comparison to look at this and say present worth for over these three years and then present worth over this six year span. So what do we do instead? Well, if we're going to look at it in present worth, then we're gonna look at it in terms of the least common multiple of the options. So for now, let's just look at A and B. So if we are gonna look at A and B, right, let's redraw A. So here is the present worth of A, but I'm gonna put underneath LCM, right? Because this is what it looked like before. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the least common multiple, which in this case will be six. So it's gonna match exactly with the present worth of B as far as time spans go. So then the way we would do that is just like you see it here, except the fixed cost would reappear because we would purchase, let's say it's equipment, we would purchase this over again. So we buy it here now in year zero times zero. And then one, two, three, we buy it again because now this piece of equipment has expired, right? That means that we're going to operate it and maintain it for another three years. And then we're going to get the salvage value for the second time. Right now, we have time spans that are the same between these. So now we have six year span here and we have a six year span here. So now we can compare. The way we would do that, present worth B, right? It's gonna be minus the fixed cost that's already in present worth minus the annual operating costs and maintenance seems to be in there. So that's all the annual costs for this. We're looking for a present worth given A, 10%, right? For six years, because that's the life cycle of this option now. And then plus the salvage value, right? Salvage value, all these would be for option B, right? If you're plugging in the values. And now we're looking for a present given future 10% six periods from now. I was assuming it's years. So six years from now. Now, if we wanted to do this one, right? Now we're doing A, which would be this cash flow here. Now, this is the first cost for A, which is already in present. Then the annual operating costs, right? P given A, 10% for six years, 
right? Because now we have this over a complete six year period. So even though it's three years, then we repurchase it. So we have these costs all six years. Then we get our salvage value back, right? But we get our salvage value back right here in period three. So now it's P given F 10% for three years, right? Now what we could do is write it up a long way and I'll do that so that we can see it, right? Because now we're gonna have another fixed cost here, but this one is when we repurchase this. So it is also in period three or year three, right? So here's the repurchase. If we wanted to, we could have just combined these and saved ourselves a step. But I'm doing it explicitly here so that you see all the values. Now we get our salvage value back again, but this time at the end of our LCM of the shared lifespan. So here we're getting our last salvage value and all of that would be the present worth of A. Now we can compare a more apples to apples comparison of B versus A. So now let's look at a different example of the present worth. So let's say you have a biochem business and you're looking for a facility for storage or operations, whatever. And you have two options, right? Instead of first costs, now we're considering upfront cost and then annual costs rather than annual operating costs. And then a deposit return, which would be the same as your salvage here we have a contract term, which is the same as the lifespan or the life cycle of these options. So we can see one option is a little cheaper up front, but more expensive annually and doesn't give us quite as much back, but it also doesn't require as long a contract. This one, option B, is more expensive up front, but less per year and gives you a little more back after a longer time frame. So in the past problem, when we had the same life cycle, we could just draw this out and say first cost, annual operating cost, salvage value, solve. And if we were going to do that with, let's say a five year term, right? So let's say I equals 15% at N equal to five years, then what? Then, I mean, it wouldn't be hard to solve, right? We would have present worth of option A is minus 15K minus 3.5K, P given A, 15% for five periods. Now I would take it, I guess it depends on the contract, but I would take it that we're not gonna get our deposit back if we don't meet the terms of the six years. So then we would never see this 1K. And if we were going to evaluate B, option B, right? Then it's minus 18K, minus 3.1K, same factor, right? Now this doesn't, this five year comparison is a bad one because we don't get our deposits back, most likely. And because this option never really has a chance to catch up, right? Because it's cheaper annually and it has a higher deposit, but this never shows up in our decision-making process because of the time frame that we chose. So how do we get by that? As you saw from previous, we would choose least common multiple. So in the case of six and nine, we would be looking at an 18 year time frame. So we're looking at 18 years. If I was going to draw that out, then what? then the cash flow would look something like this, right? Whereby, here's our first cost. Here's the first term of the lease, right? Six years. Here we get our deposit back. Then we renew. We renew for another term, 12, right? Get our deposit back. And then we renew again for the last portion of it. There's no cost here because we've met our least common multiple of 18 years. We do, however, consider that last deposit that we get back, 
right? Similarly with the next one, so we would have, so that was three cycles for A, right? And then here for B, we would have just two cycles, right? Cycle one, cycle two. Here's the first cost, and then this should show, but doesn't the annual costs, which would be the same all the way through. Here's when we renew. Here's the deposit we get back. Here's the deposit we get back. No renewal because we're in, at least common, a multiple of 18, right? So those are our life cycles. Now, if we were gonna solve that, then we'd have to go through, right? Present worth, let's say, of A. So present worth of A will be minus 15K. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna knock out these 15Ks all at once. So we have three of them because we have three cycles, right? So then we have present given future, 15%, six, right? Then we have 15K. We have 15K, present given future, 15%. And then there is no 18 because we don't renew here, right? As we stated. Next, we have the annual operating costs, which should be 3,500 here. So then that would be minus 3.5K. We can knock this out all in one because we can do P given A, 15% for 18, right? 18 years, we're just going all the way through. Then we have our deposits. So we get a deposit back right here in year zero. So what I'm gonna do for the deposits is move them up to here. So there's no deposit back yet because we just started. Here I can do plus $1,000, 1K. I could do P given F six, right? P given F 15%, six plus 1K, P given F, 15%, 12. And then here, this one does show up. So that's the only difference. So now we have P given F 1K, P given F 15%, 18, All right? Now you could choose, rather than doing these factors, to just reduce this to 14K, right? 14K, and then solve, as long as you include that one, All right? Then PWB, I'm gonna do the same thing. Minus 18K, minus 18K, P given F, right? 15% for nine, right? Now in this case, I'm just gonna go straight to this one and take this 2K. So I'll know that this is 16K. So this one's done now. So I'll do the annual. Minus 3.1K, P given A, 15%, 18, right? Common, this common multiple, plus this 2,000 remaining. So 2K, salvage value, right? P given F, 15%, 18, and that's an eight. And that would be it. So if we were to be evaluated five years, right, in the previous, then these deposits and this lower cost doesn't have time to take effect. So most likely with five, six years, option A is gonna be the preferable one because it's gonna be less negative. But if we do the least common multiple, right, then there's more time for these lower operating costs and higher deposits to register. So then you would get, I don't know, around, 45K and PWB around 41-ish, 41K. So now this one is less negative and we would choose this one. Now, one of the problems with this 
is let's say in this case we're looking at 18 years right so we're looking at n equal to 18 years now what are the chances that within all of these cycles are let's say our mar right or our interest rate whatever is going to stay the same right is it, is it always going to be 15 percent over 18 years i mean think about how interest rates change over time right as the the Fed and other factors take effect. The other thing is, you know, 12 years from now, can we still renew this lease for 15K? None of these costs and prices and deposits change. And so this isn't, this is more of an apples to apples comparison, you know, a fairer way to compare it, but it's not a perfect way to compare it because there are things that are gonna change over 18 years. Later, we'll get to uh, another way to look at alternatives with different life cycles.